Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Root Beer here and I'm going to be finishing off the 2016 Friar Contest with question number four. So here's the question. If you haven't given it a try, by all means, please do so. Uh, you can get a copy of this contest, as with all the contests, by clicking the very first link down below. But uh, let's, let's get into it here. So question four. A bingo card has 25 different integers arranged into five rows and five columns labeled B-I-N-G-O, because bingo was his name-o. The middle integer is always zero. They got that shown here. The integers in columns B are between 1 and 15 inclusive, so you can have, for example, this 15 here. That's allowed. Uh, column I, 16 through 30. Column N, anything from 31 through 45, other than the middle integer, again, has to be zero. Uh, G, 46 to 60, so we're going up by 15s. 61 to 75, and that's in this O column. Okay. Uh, so, first one here, a little light bulb question, just need the final answer. What is the smallest possible sum of the numbers in a row on a bingo card? Well, to get the smallest possible sum, we want to use the smallest possible numbers. There's only so many numbers allowed in each column. So we might think, well, I'll just add up 1, 16, 31, uh, 46, and 61. But remember in this third column, if we pick the right row then we can use this zero, which is much less than 31. So I think the smallest sum, you'll have, uh, we'll just draw a little quick bingo card here, nothing too fancy. So if we just use the middle row, we can put a zero here. And I can put a one here, a 16 here. Don't need the 31, but we can go to uh, 46 and 61 here. Those are the smallest ones, right? Yeah, because we go up by 15. And so uh, we can get a sum here. 1 and 16, that's 17. Uh, so we'll have 4, uh, carry the 1. So we'll have 124 is the smallest sum. Now we can write a quick little bit of reasoning, or we could just put the 124 in for the, the answer. That's fine, too, because it is a light bulb question. All right. I think I saw B and C. Yeah, B and C are both written, so we're going to have to explain ourselves. And uh, what have we got here? Carrie's bingo card has a row and a diagonal, each with the same sum. What is the smallest possible such sum? Show that there is a bingo card with this sum, and explain why there is no bingo card with a smaller sum. Well, that would be explain why it is the smallest. Now, again, to use the smallest, I'm thinking we should really use this, this zero here. And fortunately, there is, you know, we can find a row and a diagonal that do that. In fact, just looking ahead, it looks like they're going to use that same row and diagonal in C part. So by using the zero, we can get to small sum. But it's not going to be as simple as, I guess I can use... Uh, this example, or that this bingo card. No, I'll do another bingo card. It's We obviously need something a little bit bigger than 124. Just because there's really only one way to get that lowest 124, doing 1, 16, 0, 46, and 61. I'm not allowed to use the same numbers in each row, so this has to at least be a 2 up here. This has to at least be a 17. This has to at least be uh, a 47. This has to at least be a 62, and that's way too big. Uh, in fact, it's one more than everything uh, in the previous one, so it would be 128 would be this diagonals. So. so those don't match up, and that's a bit of a problem. But, um, hmm... I suppose we could try to, if I swap these, get a 17 and a 16. That would increase this by one and decrease this by another. We're getting closer. I suppose we could do the same thing over here with 46 and 47. And that increases one sum by one and decreases the other sum by another. So I can do... 
I can get a row and a, uh, a diagonal to have 126, which is not that bad considering that the smallest possible sum, period, is uh, 124. So if I think it's 126, first of all, I've shown that it is 126, but I would have to show why you can't do 125. Hmm. Well, I think, I think just like with our reasoning for part A, that we want to use the smallest set of numbers, I think to, let's, let's say something like, um, we need to use that zero. Just because you've got a diagonal. The diagonals have to pass through the center one, so I don't think that's really up for dispute. This leaves eight squares, two per column, B, I, G, and O. Okay. To get the smallest sum, we should use the smallest numbers. So that would be for B, you'd want to use 1 and 2. For I, you'd want to use 16, 17. Uh, don't need to worry about N. Uh, for G, you would, need, you would want 46 and 47. And for O, you would want 61, 62. Okay, that seems reasonable. We want the smallest sums. You should get the smallest numbers. Now, uh, adding all these up, So the sums for both the row and diagonal must be at least, because maybe there's some other way to make uh, 126 by using a 3 or something, but there's no way you can go smaller than using the two smallest B's in the B column. There's no way you can go smaller than the two smallest I's, two smallest G's, two smallest O's. So no matter how you do the row and diagonal, your the sum of the two will be at least one plus two. I, I don't know what the order of the one and two are. I could easily have done this with the two here and the one here and kept the 16 and 17 where they were originally. That would have been fine. So I think there's lots of ways to do to get 126. And this sum here will be, well, it'll have to be twice uh, 126. So that'll be 252. So since... The row and column, or not the row and column, the row and diagonal have the same sum. It is at least 252 over 2, which is 126. So there, we, we know we can't get lower than 126, but I have shown a way to get 126, which is exactly what they asked for. So 126 is the smallest such sum. Okay. Not unreasonable there. Okay, C. In the bingo card show, the numbers in the diagonal and the third row are missing. Exact same diagonal and, and row that we were using in the last question. Uh, determine the with justification the number of ways to complete this bingo card. Ooh, so we'll have some possibilities. Uh, so that the sum of the numbers in this diagonal is equal to 177, and the sum of the numbers in the third row is 177. So we want the same, uh, same uh, value again. Now 177, that is much higher than the 124 and 126 we had in the previous two questions. How, how, what, it might be a good idea to just find a way we can get 177 in both, if that's even possible. 
Um, now they've got some numbers already worked out here. And so that's probably going to throw a little bit uh, of an issue. We might not be able to swap things around like we did in the last part with the, uh, the 16 and the 17 got to easily switch places. Certain numbers might not be available for what we're doing. We're going to have to keep track of that. Okay, so um, well, let's copy the numbers they have. 23, 35, 47, 65. Five thirty one fifty two sixty three There's a sixty nine I think down there eleven twenty forty and finally nine eighteen thirty eight forty eight. Okay, so, um, oh, yeah, can't forget that zero in the middle. So, 177, that's pretty high up, as I say. What if we tried something like 15, 30? Actually, let, let's just try as high as we can. Uh, that wouldn't be, that's 45 for the next one, so it'd be 60. And 75 is the highest we can go there. So that would be... 150 doesn't seem right. Uh, oh, it's not 150. It's 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5. Not 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So that should be 12 times 15, and that should be 180. So pretty big, but okay, doable. Uh, so if I just sort of shave this 75 down to a 72, we're in a good position. Okay, cause that'll, that'll be 177. Can I do a similar sort of thing? Well, I'm, I'm losing a little bit each time. So f uh, 14, 29... 59 and 75 should do the trick because I go up by three here and, and I've gone down by one for each of these so overall my total should be conserved okay so I can do 177 uh, for both of those and the question is how many ways number of ways to complete the bingo card so that that happens Okay. Hmm. So, I guess you now we don't have to. I guess everything is sort of off of fifteen, thirty, sixty, and seventy-five in a sense. We had to drop three down here. We didn't have to. Uh, we could have lost three everywhere else, which is what we actually did. But I suppose we could have dropped this down to 79, or to 59, and this could have gone to 73, and that still would have worked out fine. Uh, and then we could have changed this to 60 and this to 74. So it looks like we've got a little bit of wiggle room just about everywhere. And the trick is, how am I going to write that up so that I'm organized so that I'm thought out so that I'm not missing any possible case. Hmm. So, I guess we could say something like notice the max numbers in B, I, G, and O are 15, 30, 60, 75, which add to 180.
And so we sort of, what we need to do is sort of put 15, 30, 60, and 75 in each of those spots, but then choose a way to sort of bring it back, so to, to, to scale it down a little bit. Uh, the first one I did, I kept the 15, the 30, and the 60, and I brought the 75 down by 3. But I guess we can choose how to how to distribute that 3 that I need to pull back over the, the 4 numbers. But we also need to make sure things sort of sort of line up um, in a certain... So, so that if I take 1 away from the 30 for the row, I'm not also taking 1 away for the 30 for the column, because that would put two 29s in there, and I can't use the same number twice. Hmm. So, what could we do? Well, I suppose we could, uh, let the numbers in the row be 15 minus R, 30 minus S, 60 minus T, 75 minus U. And in the diagonal, we can maybe do 15 minus D, 30 minus E, 60 minus F, and 75 minus G. And so right away, I know we can't have R can't be equal to D, S can't be equal to E, T can't be equal to F, U can't be equal to G, because otherwise you'd have the same number in in a row, or or you'd have the same two the same number twice in a diagonal. We also know that we're pulling back a total of three. I've got four things, they add up to three. So I might have some cases and then I have to, well actually, so at, at most, so, so all of R, D, all the way through U, G have to be positive. I can't go, I can't do 75 minus negative one because 76 isn't a possibility. So. I was worried that perhaps the numbers they filled in might cause a problem, but uh, the closest thing to 15 is 12. So, you know, if I had 15 here and I subtracted 3 from it, the worst I'd get is 12. Well, I'm not competing. There's no 12, 13, 14, or 15 already placed in here. Uh, closest thing to 30 is 27. That's, that's fine. Uh, 60 going down to 57. No problem there. No problem there. Okay. And that's probably something we should uh, point out. Smallest numbers we can have are 12, 27. Well, let's see. The, uh, mm. Yeah, uh, 27, 57. And 72 and all the numbers already placed in the B I G and O columns are less so we have no worries about picking an already chosen number. So we're basically free to, to pick around. So I need R plus S plus T plus U to be equal to 3. And I need D plus E plus F plus G to be equal to 3. So it's the same ask. How many ways can I use three non-negative integers, or sorry, four non-negative integers to add up to three? You could do something that has three completely. And uh, I suppose you could split it up into a one and a two. 
Or you could have three ones. Hmm. Okay. And so there's, there's going to be some, some patterns we can have. So um, if, say, RSTU is 0003, DEFG can't be 0003. But, oh, we can't have any overlap. So, so we, we can do some cases. I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3. Hmm. So there's one three, let's say one in English, one three and three zeros. This one has one two, and that's good. There's only one way to do this with one two. There's only one way to do this and have one of them be three. There's only one way to do this and have only one of them be zero. So I can use those to sort of tell, you, tell whoever's marking what patterns I'm assigning to my RSTUU. So there's one, two, one, one, two, two zeros. And there's three ones down here. Okay, so we can break this down into cases. RSTU has one three. Now there's four ways to place that three. But um, if D, uh, D, E, F, G can have at most one zero, otherwise two of because we've got three zeros up here. Otherwise, one pair of D, R, E, S, F, T, or G, U will be zero, zero, uh, will be two zeros. Okay, think about that for a moment. If I say let R be three and the others are zero, and I come along and I say, well, you know, D could be zero, but if E, e can't be 0, F can't be 0, because otherwise F and T would be the same value, and so they would both represent 60 minus 0, which is 60. And you can't do that. We already said T and F have to be different. So there has to be, the, the, I mean, there's no way to get around zeros. You always have at least one zero. So we must be looking at this case here. So everything's split up into 1, 3, 3. And so the, the, one, uh, the ones go everywhere else, the zero is forced to match up with the three. And so the four ways to pick, this gives us four cases. The zero is forced to match with the three, and the ones are forced as well. But it does work. So that gives us four ways uh, to make the, the bingo cards. Okay, R, S, T, U, one of them is three. Okay. This, incidentally, is the, the first one that we did when we tried to, to fill this out. Uh, with, when we had the 72 here and the 60 here and the, the 59 here and the 75 here. Okay, It was 0, 0, 0, 3, and then I had 1, 1, 1, and a 0 here. Okay, So this works with what we've seen. Okay, now what if RSTU is the two zeros, one, one, and a two? If RSTU has one, two, one, one, and two zeros. Well, now without loss of generality, we can say two, one, zero, zero. I can't have the three and the zeros anywhere because there's too many zeros. Okay, we sort of just dealt with that. Um, uh, could I have, I suppose we could put a zero here and have 
these ones. That would work. Uh, is there any way to do it? No, because if, if the this zero doesn't match up with this one, you'll have a one here, and that, that won't work. Okay. Um, so... I've got one, one, uh, one, two, one, one, and two zeros. I've got four ways to pick the two. Three to pick three. Three letters are then left over to pick uh, to pick for the one. So twelve cases here. There's twelve possible ways of arranging one, two, one, one, and two zeros. And then what did I say? I used a little arrow. So D, E, F, G could be zero, uh, zero, one, one, one. That's certainly possible. Uh, but zero must match with the one in R, S, T, U. So n then nothing else uh, happens there. As soon as I pick the two, one, zero, and zero, and I know that this case is going to happen, nothing's going to, no, there's nothing additional for me to choose. Um, I can't have D, E, F, G be the three, zero, zero, zero. But could it be the two, one, zero, zero? Well, can't have the zeros match. So with R, S, T, U being, say, 2, 1, 0, 0, I'll have to put zeros here for the D, E, F, G. But then I do have a choice. Is this going to be the 1 or is this the 2? So two ways to pick the two. And so of the 12 cases where I can split up RSTU into uh, two, one, zero, and zero, uh, for each of those, I get two possible ways to do DEFG. So that's a total of 12 from the previous page, where the DEFG are zero, one, one, one. And two times 12, which is 24, so 36 ways do it with this case. Okay, one final way to split these things up. The R, S, T, and U have one, zero, three ones. Uh, one, 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 zero. Now, uh, I could do the zero, 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 th three. Incidentally, there's four ways to pick the zero. And then the, these three ones are forced. Now, D, E, F, G could be the three, zero, zero, zero sort of situation. As we've already sort of seen, uh, the three has to match up with the, the zero, however. So it's four, it's just four cases. Uh, could we have D, E, F, G be the two, one, zero, zero? Absolutely we could. Sort of a, a symmetry from what we saw before. We would have to have the one match up with the zero. And then out of these three, you're free to pick the two. So, so four times. So I'd say four ways to pick the zero among R, S, T, U. Three ways to pick the two. So twelve cases there. Okay, so that gives me a total of sixteen. 
4 plus 12 is 16. So, and that's, that's it in terms of possibilities. So there are... It was 4 for the first one. 4 cases. And then it was 36 cases and then 16 cases. So 4, 36, and 16, and that's going to be a total of 56 possible ways to fill the bingo card. And there we go, and we got our explanation. I mean, I'd probably write a sentence or two more just explaining what it is that I'm doing, but we, we've got the, the idea there. The we've split it up. There's only so many ways I can pick this R S T U or the D E F G. Okay, they're one of three possible quadruplets, and then we just say, well, okay, if I if R S T U has exactly one three, how many ways can you make that? And then what possible cases can you have for the D E F G? And then uh, what possible ways are do we have any choices in arranging those numbers? And there we go. That's all. It, that's all it is. It was mounted to 256 different ways to do it. Cool. All right, so that finishes off the 2016 Friar. If you're looking for more written contests, the 2016 Galois is the next step up. If you're looking for more grade 9 level uh, contests, of course, the Pascal is a grade 9 level multiple choice contest. Either way, I look forward to doing more math with you, and I will see you in the next video for more math contests. Have a great day.